Hi everyone, my name is Taylor Olivia Spidell. For those who you know me, I go by Taylor. And I just decided to share my story on YouTube. I know I made a post on Facebook, which went viral. And I just appreciate everybody who's been reposting, tweeting, shouting at everybody. And I just want to, you know, come on camera and explain everything. And, um talk about my personal experience. I am currently a sophomore here at C Central Michigan University. Um, my major is elementary education. And um, yeah, I'm just coming on camera to talk about my experience and the sexual assault that happened on campus. My overall experience, I had two different experiences. An experience, one as a CMU student but also as a colored female CMU student. And honestly, I mean, which college don't do this, but a lot of colleges, CMU, they just want their money. That is really what they're focused on. And they're not really like helpful to students, especially people of color here, get their bills paid. It's like, it's been so many different offices I've been having to go through just to like get a simple, hey, okay, we're gonna help you. We're gonna do this, that, and the third. When I've had, I have Caucasian friends who they could just go to the office and whatever they need is done like that. But if I go to the office, it's just a whole bunch of unnecessary processes that I would have to go through. Um, so it was that then CMU was honestly my dream school. I've always dreamed about going here. So attending here was actually a really, it was a really big deal. And, um, is I'm sad that I'm leaving. I'm sad on the reason why I'm leaving, but due to lack of action because of the sexual assault report that I made, it now makes me feel I do not. I do not want to be on a campus where if I tell the campus police that I was sexually assaulted by a student on campus, they won't do anything. Um, I was sexually assaulted on February 15th, 2021, the day after Valentine's Day. And um, it took me a minute to realize what happened. So um, February 15th was on a Monday. I filed my report on Thursday within the same week, February 18th. And um, I ended up going to the hospital. I made a report, I went to the hospital. I was in the hospital for three and a half hours getting an exam. I had to take a whole bunch of STD prevention pills. I got a shot on my butt. I had to keep retelling the story of what happened over and over and over again. Then on the same day, I had to go back to the police station and write a statement. It was a lot. I also had, I cannot remember um, the name of the tool, but it's a tool that goes into your vagina and it expands so the lady could look and see if there was anything wrong down there. It was, it was a lot. It was a lot that I had to go through. Then the following Friday, um, the next day after I went through all the day, they asked for my phone and I voluntarily gave it up because for evidence, because it's like, I have nothing to hide. I'm not lying about anything. This is way too much to go through to be lying. So, fast forward to that Saturday. I say, you know, I don't really, I don't really like the way this is going. Because nobody was really doing anything. So, I was like, okay, I just want to press charges. Because nobody's doing anything. This, this is just too much to go through. And nobody's going to do anything. So that Monday, I get a call from the detective on the case. And um, he asked me, despite me saying I'm not pressing charges anymore, he asked me to come in for questioning. And I was like, you know, okay, I don't mind coming in because, like I said, I have nothing to hide. But remind you, they did not question the student who assaulted me. They want to question me, the victim, which is crazy, especially after I said I don't want to press charges. So I go in and long story short, 
he basically victim blamed me, called me a liar, used air quotations around sexual assault. So I decided to leave. And then instead of, so I'm like, okay, well, if CMUPD don't believe me, I'll go elsewhere. We have this, um, we have another sexual assault program here. It's called Oh Cry. So I talked to a lady in Oh Cry, and she was actually a really nice, sweet lady. But is she told me in order in because CMUPD failed to do their job, I was trying to get the person who assaults me in jail locked up. But since they failed to do their job, I'm like, okay, so can I get him kicked off campus? And that is why I reached out to Oh Cry. And um, the lady, she was a really nice lady. She she was really nice and she was really sweet. But she told me that I would have to go through another process. And I personally feel like, you know, since being in the hospital for three and a half hours, having to retell that story over and over and over again to multiple different people just to be victim blamed and be called a liar, I'm not I'm not I'm not going through any more processes, especially for nothing to be done. Despite me going through all of those things, nothing was still done about the student who assaulted me on campus. So, um, I decided not to do that. I said, you know, I'm good. I'm not gonna go through another process because nothing's gonna happen. Nothing's gonna happen. So then I decided to email the president of Central Michigan University. Um, he did not respond to my email at all. So this, as I stated before, the assault happened February 15, 2021. Yesterday was April 1st, 2021. And I decided, okay, so since nobody here on Central Michigan University campus is going to do anything, now it's time to go public about this. So um, I decided, because the other thing is um, a lot of women had came forward and were filing their own sexual assault and sexual harassment reports that happened on Central Michigan University campus and still yet nothing has been done so i'm just like okay so at this point it's now time to go public about this since nothing is going to be done so i decided to make a post on facebook i made a post on my snapchat and i made a post on my instagram regarding this situation and um it actually it blew up more than what i expected i honestly was not expecting it to go viral i wasn't expecting people to repost i'm very happy that people are reposting and sharing because this is not okay it's too many people who women in particular who've been shut up about their situation who's been victim blamed and who's been called a liar regarding their sexual assault when they're not lying and it's a shame that it's so many people out here who've been sexually assaulted, both men and women, who never came forward about the situation because they have the fear of being victim blamed and being called a liar. So um, I decided I decided to go forward about everything and go public about the public route. So I decided to post on my Facebook, my Instagram, my Snapchat. I decided to post on every social media platform I had. And a lot of people, like, it went viral within. I posted at 7 p.m. It went viral at 10 p.m. And I posted last night. So a lot of people have been texting me and calling me and reposting. And I appreciate all the love because I'm not going to lie to you. I was very nervous about going public about this because it's been people, even my own, my even my old friend group, they didn't believe what happened. They called me a liar and victim blamed me and said I wanted a relationship with him. So I lied and said that he raped me and this and the third. So I was actually quite nervous about going public about this because it's like, you know, if your own close circle won't believe you, then who truly would? But I had to tell myself, you know, well, Taylor, if you don't go public about your story, you never know, like, who else is going through it. And since I went public with my story, um, it's been a lot of people who I 
never even knew have been sexually assaulted but they came forward and they told me they i was the reason why they were more comfortable with sharing their story so i said that to say i'm not looking for attention i'm not doing this to get back to school no it's just people need to know this happened on cmu campus and this is not where you need to be this is not where you need to be at all, especially if you're a female, but a, a female of color, especially because they do not do anything. I went to three different departments on CMU's campus and nobody, they didn't kick him off campus. They didn't get him locked up. They didn't do anything. And since people have been reposting and sharing my posts, the school, the president did reach out to me and it's like, I personally feel like I'm not talking to anybody about this because I kept this on the low for about two and a half months and did nobody do anything about it. So now that I went viral and now that I shared my story, now y'all want to reach out to me? No, it's too, it is too late for that. It's too late for that. So... Yes, I just want to say I appreciate everybody who's been reaching out to me. I I am willing to talk to any and everybody who have any questions. And yeah, I just want to publicly come and share my story and talk about it. And I just want to publicly say I love and appreciate everybody who's been really here and supportive because it's been really hard lately. So I love and appreciate everybody. And please feel free to text me.